Welcome back for the remaining lecture. As we were discussing that there are two different types or two major classes of transposable elements in eukaryotes. These classes are retrotransposons and DNA transposons. So we shall discuss them one by one. So class one retrotransposons are the DNA sequences and uh, we shall not go into their detailed structure because you are in introductory class. So class one tra uh, transposable elements uh, follow a copy and paste mechanism for their transposition from one place to another place. I mean, first of all, uh, the DNA of the transposable element. Here is an example of transposable element, uh, which is which starts and ends by a direct repeat sequences of five base pairs. I mean, same sequence is present on the both ends. And between these repeat sequences is the transposable element. So first of all, this transposable element is transcribed from DNA into an RNA. And uh, as we can see here, and in this RNA, there is an enzyme, uh, which is the reverse transcriptase enzyme. This reverse transcriptase enzyme uh, reverse transcribes this RNA into DNA. And this DNA is again uh, inserted back into the DNA. So in this way, we can see that the original transposable element stays at its position and it produces a new copy of that transposable element. So I repeat the, the class one retrotransposons first produce an RNA. This RNA is reverse transcribed into a DNA and that DNA is inserted back into the chromosome on some other position. So as I have already told that this transposome can be inserted into the same chromosome or it can be inserted into another chromosome. So the characteristics of these retrotransposomes are similar to retroviruses such as HIV. So there are three major subclasses or orders of class one retrotransposomes. First one of them is called long terminal repeat sequences. So these long terminal repeat sequences as it can be seen here in these LTR sequences. So if they are only they are present, so they encode the reverse transcriptase enzyme, which is a reverse, uh, similar to ret retroviruses. The other group is called long interspersed nuclear elements or lines. So these lines encode a reverse transcriptase, but they do not carry LTRs or long terminal repeats. And they are transcribed by RNA polymerase to enzyme. Similarly, this third form is short interspersed nuclear elements, uh, which do not encode reverse transcriptase and are transcribed by RNA polymerase 3 enzyme. Now let's see DNA transposons which belong to class 2. These are actually the same elements that were discovered by Barbara McClintock in maize. And they usually, they use a mechanism of cut and paste for their transposition. So class one transposons use copy paste mechanism and these transposons, they use cut paste transposition, which means uh, these elements uh, does not involve an RNA intermediate. And this process of transposition is catalyzed by several transposase enzymes. So its mechanism is very simple. I mean, the transposase enzymes makes a staggered cut at the target site, which produce sticky ends. I mean, if this is the target site, it cuts here and produce sticky ends. So what are sticky ends actually? I mean, if it is the DNA like this, 
and so these ends are called sticky ends this one so these are sticky ends the which were produced by staggered uh, cut as you can see here and here these are sticky ends so the new dna is inserted inside it so the transposis cuts out the dna transposome this one for example and ligates it to the target site this one is the target site so a dna polymerase fills the resulting gap from sticky ends so here uh, when it is joined here are some gaps so this dna polymerase enzyme it fills these gaps and the dna ligase closes the sugar phosphate backbone i mean uh, dna polymerase can fill the gap but it cannot join two different fragments uh, so this dna ligase enzyme finishes the job now let's see what is the importance of these transposable elements for different organisms so a transposome a retrosome transposome that can insert itself into a functional gene can disable that gene you can uh, you will see in your future classes that genes are actually dna sequences so when that sequence is disturbed it can ultimately affect the function of that gene which is to produce a protein so sometimes due to this insertion this gene is unable to produce new proteins or the proteins produced by this gene are dysfunctional or malfunctional sometimes similarly when a gene a transposable element that was inserted into a gene and it can leave its position as it was seen for ts so the resulting transposition produces a gap in that position and that gap uh, is generally or sometimes maybe it is not repaired properly which can ultimately affect uh, the functioning of that gene similarly if multiple copies of a transposable element is inserted in the genome for example alu elements so it can block or disturb the chromosomal pairing during cell division similarly many transposable elements contain promoters so if you remember that promoters are actually the switches of the genes that can switch on or switch off a gene and it can also uh, enhance or decrease or reduce the expression of a gene so if, the, if these promoters are inserted somewhere uh, in a genome which is a link, uh, link or related to a gene so it may affect the expression of that gene and uh, ultimately it may cause some disease or some mutant phenotypes in that organism here are some uh, examples of uh, diseases which are produced due to transposable elements so transposable elements are also called mutagens uh, as we have seen and they can affect the sequence of a gene so they can produce mutations and they can cause genetic diseases including hemophilia and severe combined immunodeficiency similarly there are others including in the alzheimer's disease so what are the uses or applications of transposable elements so these elements are actually used in the studies Uh, which are related to gene expression and uh, understanding of protein functions the special type of studies are uh, signature tagging mutagenesis generally utilize transposable elements transposable elements can also be used in vectors to insert sequences in novel position vectors are uh, how to say the means to transfer genes or dna from one organism to another organism so as we see spotted seed phenotype in the maze so transposable elements can also be used to understand the role of same gene in different cells of an organism so there is a, a system called sleeping beauty transposome system 
which is generally used uh, for identifying cancer cells or cancer genes in different cells. The uh, transpose elements are also potential candidates for understanding human gene therapy. And uh, last but not the least, transposable elements are also used for reconstruction of phylogenetic relationships of organisms. Phylogenetic relationships means uh, how the organisms, uh, ancestral organisms are linked or associated with their descendants. So, so they can be quantified or qualified based upon the presence of or absence of certain transposable elements. For example, we can say these transposable elements are present in particular you know, uh, offspring, so they are related to that particular, for example, ancestor. So the, here are some online resources which can be used to discover or analyze transposable elements in your sequence of interest. Uh, these are include AB Blast, Rotor, LTR Finder, Repeat Master, or VMatch. So, so if you have any questions, please go and uh, you can ask me those questions at any time. Thank you.